Let's start out by talking about certifications. We're going to go through these one by one and give a brief explanation as to our choices and recommendations. Let's start out at the utility. For general play, we do recommend that you run the fire suppression cert. However, we realize that it does take time to cert it out completely, and we only believe that it's worth running if you have it completely certed. In the meantime, go ahead and put one point into decoy flares and use that until you're all finished. For your defensive slot, use the Nanite Auto Repair System. For your performance slot, use the Hover Stability Airframe, at least while you're trying to learn. We do rec uh, also realize that the Racer High Speed Airframe is perfectly viable, but however, uh, you are about to delve into the world of Hover, and we do recommend having the Hover Stability Airframe for the best experience. Either one is an option, but for now, run Hover. Do not ever run dogfighting. Moving on to your wing mount, you're going to want to use the external afterburner fuel tanks, because not having a secondary weapon will force you to consistently use your nose gun, which is what you really need to be learning right now. Do realize that the external afterburner fuel tanks do have a cert line in this screen when you click on them from the wing mount slot, as you're seeing them alongside their other options. There is a cert line. Be sure to cert them out. For your primary weapon, you do have two options. You're going to want to use either your default primary nose gun for your faction, or your rotary nose gun. Do not use your faction-specific air-to-ground nose gun, being the air hammer for the NC, M30 Mustang AH is an air hammer, the Banshee for the TR, or the PPA for the VS. Also, do not use your faction-specific dog shit nose gun. Ever. Seriously. You can use whichever nose gun you want. The primary nose gun is going to be for longer sustained fire at range, and the rotary nose gun is going to be up close and personal burst damage. While it's entirely your choice and based on how you fly, the different factions do perform differently using the different guns, and we recommend playing to your faction's strengths. While we will do another video on that later on, for now, uh, we recommend considering the Vortec Rotary if you're the NC, and we recommend considering the VS's primary nose gun, the Sauron Laser Cannon, if you're a VS pilot. And if you're a TR pilot, you could really go either way. It's completely up to you. Sorting out the attachments of your primary weapon itself is also fairly simple. For your optics, you're going to want to save up for the 200 cert thermal optics. For your uh, mag size or reload speed upgrade, you're usually going to want to choose mag size, especially if you are running a rotary nose gun, though it's entirely up to you. For your ammo capacity upgrade, honestly, uh, obviously get on that as soon as possible. Especially if you're using a rotary nose gun, and especially, especially if you're using the Vortec rotary, as it's the most ammo limited of any of the ESFs. Let's talk rebinds. Starting out, enter the settings menu, click key binding, and scroll over to aircraft as I've already done. The first thing we're going to look at is the exit vehicle option. If you've already spent any time in ESF, you may have already rebound this, because having an eject button, which makes you fall to the ground and die, in between the go forward and the reload button, is not very good for longevity. So the absolute first thing we're going to do is clear this key, and rebind it to something else, far away from WASD. I personally bind it to comma, some people bind it to tilde, as long as it's far away from WASP, it works. The next thing we're going to look at is throttle analog. We recommend that you build, excuse me, we recommend that you bind throttle analog to S. You may notice that throttle down is bound to S. That's fine. Change it to throttle analog. Then change throttle down to X. For you, X will already be bound to uh, using your utility, and that's fine, go ahead and erase that bind because you already have your activate utility bound to F as well, and you'll still be able to use it with F. So what does throttle analog do exactly? Normally, in order to slow your ESF to a stop, you hold S down to lower your throttle all the way. What throttle analog will do is, with a tap of a button, it'll bring your throttle to zero. And that's not faster than throttle down, but it is less for your brain to remember when you're trying to learn crazy maneuvers like the reverse maneuver. If you do want throttle analog to be a part of your repertoire, but don't want it to be so frequently used that you're binding it to S, 
feel free to bind it to X instead, as we've done with Throttle Down. We do recommend this specific keybinding setup, however, because you'd be surprised you need to come to a complete stop a hell of a lot more in this game than you need to slow down a little bit. One thing I'd like to mention before we move on is that there is a bug in the game with Throttle Analog. If you hit Throttle Analog and then attempt to land your ESF, it will hover above the ground for a few uh, feet for no real reason. If you want to stop that from happening and land your ESF, just tap either W or X quickly and that will end the bug. The last change we're going to make is to the change camera option. Now, the change camera option is bound to T by default, but you really are going to want it bound to something more close and more integral to what you're doing because you're going to be pressing that key a lot. If you have a mouse uh, that has peripheral buttons on it that are uh, unbound and available and very easy to use, definitely bind it to that. If you do not, we recommend that you bind it to your middle mouse button. That means that whenever you click your middle mouse, you will change from first person to third person. In order to do that, we also recommend that you unbind previous and next weapon from the scroll wheel. That way you don't actually accidentally switch weapons while you're trying to change point of view. Since you're only ever going to have two weapons available to you in an air vehicle anyway, that is only in an ESF when you're not running external afterburner tanks, it's not too hard for you to just use the one and two keys to switch weapons. Or, frankly, you could play with this whatever uh, will with whatever your setup will allow to have work, so long as uh, the end goal being your change camera option, option being bound to something that is very easy to use. We're going to make one final change. Remember when we unbound E from the eject key? Well, there's one thing we want to do with that freed up E key. Bind pitch down to E. Uh, pitching down is what happens when you move your mouse downward on your mouse pad and your ESF moves down. Um, pressing E from this point on will make your ESF pitch down at its absolute fastest possible rate. This is going to come in handy later on, but listen very carefully. Do not press E for a while unless specifically instructed to at specific times in these videos. This is for when you're a bit better but you don't want to go around learning basic flight and the reverse maneuver using the E key to pitch down. You want to continue using your mouse. So for the time being, just forget that I had you do that, and we'll worry about it in future videos. That's about it for this one. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.